What really happens inside your body the moment HIV enters? Most people imagine HIV as a slow, creeping disease, something that takes years to show itself. But the truth is far more dramatic. The first 100 days are a war zone. A war you cannot see, cannot feel at first, but one that silently decides the course of the infection for the rest of your life. From the very second of exposure, HIV doesn't wait. It moves fast, like a thief in the night, slipping past defenses, multiplying by the billions, and leaving the immune system scrambling to catch up. In this video, we'll walk you through a day-by-day -day cinematic timeline, from the first moment the virus enters, through the silent invasion, the explosive viral surge, the fever and rash that many mistake for the flu, and finally, the fragile balance called the viral set point. The story of HIV in the first 100 days is one of speed, stealth, and survival. Let's begin. Day zero, the moment of exposure. It starts with a single act. Unprotected sex, shared needles, a blood exposure. For most people, HIV begins at a mucosal surface, inside the lining of the genital tract, rectum, or mouth. The virus itself is tiny, just genetic material wrapped in a protein coat, surrounded by an envelope stolen from the last human cell it infected. Yet inside that shell lies a coat that has outsmarted medicine for decades. On day zero, when HIV first enters the body, it does not float aimlessly. It seeks out very specific cells, dendritic cells and CD for T cells. Dendritic cells are like the sentinels of the immune system. Their job is to patrol, capture invaders, and present them to the immune system. Ironically, HIV hijacks them. Instead of being destroyed, HIV uses dendritic cells as a taxi service, hitching a ride into the lymph nodes, the command centers of the immune system. From there, HIV finds its favorite target, the CD for T cell. These are the generals of the immune army, the very cells that coordinate defense. HIV doesn't just attack the body, it attacks the commander of the body's defenses. And once it slips inside a CD for cell, it rewrites that cell's program. The CD for cell is no longer human, it becomes a virus factory. By the end of day zero, only a handful of cells may be infected. But each one is producing thousands of new viruses, the clock has started ticking. Days 1 to 10, Silent Invasion. The first 10 days after exposure are a time of silence. Most people feel nothing, they live their lives unaware. They go to work, kiss their loved ones, eat dinner, never realizing an invisible invasion has begun. Inside, however, the story is very different. HIV spreads rapidly. From the initial site of entry, it travels into the bloodstream and settles into the lymph nodes. These nodes, in the groin, under the arms, in the neck, are packed with CD for T cells. HIV multiplies at an astonishing rate. Each infected cell can release thousands of new viruses. Those viruses then infect more cells, which in turn make even more. Within days, the number of viruses in the blood, the viral load, can reach millions per milliliter. Think of it like a fire starting in a forest. At first, just a few sparks. But by day five, the fire is racing from tree to tree, unstoppable, devouring everything in its path. Yet from the outside, nothing looks wrong. There are no symptoms, no warning signs. The person feels healthy. That is the danger. HIV's genius lies in this silent invasion. By the time the body realizes what's happening, the virus is already everywhere. Days 11 to 20. The first battle. By the second or third week, the body finally begins to notice something is wrong. The innate immune system, the first line of defense, kicks in. Cytokines flood the bloodstream, interferons try to block viral replication. CD8 killer T cells, the assassins of the immune army, begin seeking out infected cells. This is when symptoms may appear, fever, rash, night sweats, swollen lymph nodes, sore throat, headache, fatigue. Doctors call this the acute retroviral syndrome, but to the average person, it feels like the flu, or even like COVID, and because it resembles so many other illnesses, most people dismiss it. Meanwhile, the viral load is peaking. By day 20, the amount of virus in the blood can reach levels higher than at any other point in the entire infection. A single drop of blood contains millions of copies of HIV. This is also when a person is most infectious. 
Many people unknowingly pass the virus on to others during this period, believing they just have a bad flu. The first battle has begun, but the war is far from over. Days 21 to 30, acute HIV syndrome. Around the one month mark, the infection reaches its dramatic climax. The body feels under siege, the fever spikes. Rash spreads across the skin, night sweats drench the sheets. Some people experience mouth ulcers or swollen glands. It is often described as the worst flu of my life, yet even now, most people do not connect these symptoms to HIV. Unless they know that they had a high-risk exposure, they rarely think of testing. And if they do test too early, the results may not yet show positive, because antibodies haven't fully formed. In sigh, HIV is still in control, CD4 counts drop sharply. Millions of cells are being destroyed, the body is fighting desperately, but the virus is always one step ahead. Doctors compare this stage to a storm, lightning flashes, winds howl, trees bend, but eventually, the storm passes. By the end of the first month, symptoms begin to fade. Many believe they have recovered from a seasonal flu. But in reality, HIV has just transitioned into a new phase. Days 31 to 50, the counterattack. By the second month, the immune system launches its counterattack. This is when seroconversion happens, the process where the body produces antibodies against HIV. These antibodies don't eliminate the virus, but they help slow it down. CD8 killer T cells, primed by dendritic cells, hunt infected CD4 cells and destroy them. For a short while, it seems like the body is regaining control. The viral load, which was at explosive levels, begins to drop. The person feels better. Energy returns. The fever disappears, but the war is deceptive. HIV has already established itself in hidden corners of the body. Reservoirs like the brain, bone marrow, and lymph nodes. These viruses lie low, invisible to the immune system, waiting for their chance to rise again. To the patient, this phase feels like a recovery. To the virus, it's simply a change in strategy. Days 51 to 70, a fragile balance. The third month brings a fragile balance. The immune system is no longer overwhelmed, CD for counts stabilize. Viral load decreases and reaches a lower level. The person may feel completely healthy again. But this is not victory, it is a stalemate. Doctors call this the establishment of the viral set point. The immune system and the virus reach a kind of equilibrium, a temporary ceasefire. Yet this balance comes at a cost. Every day, thousands of CD4 cells are still being destroyed. The immune system is burning energy, constantly fighting, never resting, and HIV, though quieter, is never gone. It hides in reservoirs, mutates constantly, and learns how to evade every new immune response. This is the danger of HIV. Just when the patient believes everything is fine, the virus has already laid the foundation for a chronic, lifelong infection. Day 71 to 100, viral set point. By day 100, the end of the third month, the viral set point is firmly established. This set point determines how the infection will progress in the years ahead. A lower set point means the immune system is holding its ground. A higher set point means the virus is still strong and the road to AIDS will be faster. The patient, however, feels normal. They go about their life unaware. Many never get tested. Some don't discover their status for years until their CD for count has already fallen dangerously low. But inside, HIV is always active, slowly, quietly, it chips away at the immune system. The first 100 days are not the whole story of HIV, but they are the prologue. The virus has invaded, the body has fought back, and the battle lines are drawn. What happens next depends on one crucial factor, whether treatment begins. Final words. The first 100 days of HIV are a silent war. From the moment of exposure, HIV spreads like wildfire. For weeks, it multiplies unseen, reaching levels higher than at any other time in the infection. Then the immune system fights back, driving the virus down but never eliminating it. By the end of 100 days, the virus has found its balance, the viral set point, and chronic infection begins. This is why testing is essential. This is why awareness matters. Most people who transmit HIV do so in the early weeks, when they don't even know they're infected. And most people who survive and thrive with HIV today are those who begin treatment early, 
before the virus has caused permanent damage. HIV is not just a slow disease, it is a fast, silent invasion followed by years of hidden conflict. And the story of those first 100 days may decide everything that comes after.